I love RVing. All the fun it brings to you and the family. But think of an RV as a rapidly aging house in dog years. In that stuff just happens. It's not who or if, it's when. And when it does happen, your only fountain to youth for this RV is you. Unless you got a lot of expendable income to pay somebody to fix basic things. We can just show you how to do it for very cheap. And there really is no better time to do this thing than when you're about to trade it in. There's a million things you're probably gonna have to fix to make the trade-in value go up. And if you do, you'll end up avoiding going upside down and it's all worth everything. Stay tuned, this is how we do it. That these are, it's pushed down there. Really, we gotta get rid of these old staples. The only way to get rid of those old staples is to cut them out. The only way to cut those out is with an oscillating tool. So let's get those, let's put this bed up. Cutting all those staples out is the only way we'll ever be able to level this back flush again. Otherwise we have no chance. The stuff will not fit back the same. RV furniture looks really nice, but it really is all just cheap particle board laminated with a wooden texture. Okay, so that was like that. So now we can actually move this. We can just re-implement our own staples. And then we'll figure out how to refinish the wood after we put in new staples. We could actually just wood glue that in place of clamps, and that would probably be a much more permanent fix, and it probably would have broken the way it did. Maybe Gorilla Glue would have worked better on this, but I was just afraid of the foaming coming out and then ruining the finish more, so I went ahead and just used wood glue, and then I found small soft clamps like this one to hold it in place while the glue cured. For spots that were just truly, really troublesome and wouldn't sit together with the soft clamps, I did use staples. I used actually a lot of staples. That was uh, part of the way that we kind of set this whole thing until the glue actually cured strong enough to keep it. Once it's cured, you can remove the staples or you could just paint over them with a marker. So it's already kind of jacked up, but at least it's straight. And then we'll, I know they make wood refinishing pieces. If we have to pull some of these staples out after the glue is dried, then we can do that too. We definitely need to find some wood refinishing pieces. And I think that'll be our best bet to really solidify this. Can look nice again. Everything sat back in right except for the corners. They're gonna cause me a lot of problems. They took a lot of damage during the last haul through. So we're gonna have to fill those in. To fill them in, we put painter's tape around all the clean area. And we did use painter's tape because we used duct tape to try and hold this together going down the road so it wouldn't get any more damaged. And that ended up ripping out the finish. You see that those parts where it looked like it kind of just got ripped off the, the finish? That is from duct tape. So there's no problem here this time. And the ends I filled in with wood glue and then I had to keep refilling it. You should just use wood putty for that. I didn't know how it would look with the marker, but it would have been fine. Now for the rest of the furniture. There's all these little nicks and scrapes. One thing I did not anticipate inside the cupboards it was that all the shaking and rattling while going down the road makes everything in your cupboard shake and rattle against the finish. And we obviously know now that the finish is really cheap. So naturally, a million little scars and scuffs and scratches and dings on the end pretty much all the ends you can see are worn the only way we're going to get around that is if you find a touch-up marker that is very very close to the same color as this in this case this furniture is dark walnut putting it on like this is all right but before it dries you kind of want to thin it out whether you rub your finger over it or you have a damp rag and then you kind of smudge out it so it doesn't just darken like too thick over anything other than the obvious affected side that matters. So no, it's a, it's, a, it's a mixture of smudging and working it in is not, you can't just lay down there. Otherwise you're gonna have a bunch of dark spots, which is better than a bunch of not dark spots, like all the little dings. So, I mean, some of them were, they had to be dark cause they were so big, but a lot of them we were able to kind of get the wood really, really close to almost a factory finish to where you really had to go there and look and tell that there was some stuff wrong. The marker did so well, it even took a hold of a lot of the really hideous stuff like this where the, we had tape here or something was here and it just ripped off the finish. And on the face of the cabinetry, the only part of the whole cabinetry that's actually wood, it did all right as well. And also get like yoga mats for this kind of stuff. The like this nonsense, but it had yoga mat in there, none of that would have been scarred and I would have never had to go in here, touch up paint, any of that stuff. Could have just put yoga mat in there and it would have been just fine but it didn't, and then stuff was like rattling in there and shaking as we're going down the road, and obviously scratches on this cheap stuff. So like, yoga mat in there, yoga mat in there, definitely in here. Like, I don't know where this came from, this rust nonsense, we're gonna see if we can put CLR, nothing has been able to clean that out. We're almost really batting a thousand here. Got this crappy, we got non-stick tape, we re, got Gorilla tape, 
re reapplied this thing. I can't believe what held this thing on was <laughs> double-sided tape, but that's, hey, whatever works. Just fix that, fix that, clean the fridges. Yeah. There's just a few things left. Obviously, there's still the hole in the door, which I gotta talk to the guy tomorrow and see what he wants to do about that. The more thing I hate about it is this cheap linoleum. They put it everywhere, even in the storage. If you have this, put a rubber mat in there to protect the bottom because then you end up just scarring it up like this. I had to go do some stable work back there to fix parts that ripped, actually pulling and sliding stuff out. I really just kind of want a drawer slide in there. That would help tremendously with everything. The most immediate and easiest and quickest thing to stop from damage is rubber mat that. All things said, the inside repairs in conjunction with cleaning up the outside yielded very good for the inspection of the trade-in. And I got all my money back plus more on that trailer towards this new one I got here. I needed a trailer that is just a little bit bigger, and this one is just a little bit bigger with a fifth wheel. But I will miss this one. After I fixed everything in it, I really started to like it again, and I almost didn't want to trade it in. I just almost kept it. It does really well. I do like the Stealth line. I would recommend the Forest River Stealth to anybody. It'll help you and your family enjoy things tremendously in ways that it's just really hard to enjoy otherwise. However big or small or old and used or brand new, I would just try and get a travel trailer or specifically a toy hauler and just enjoy your time out in life while you can. There are a lot of beautiful things out there in the country that if you're distracted by life, you'll never get to see them. So make an effort. Good luck out there, guys. Happy camping.